here we are at the Thomas C2 about to perform an installation. An install on this Thomas C2. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is take these plates off here. All right, I'm going to have to take this plate off here. We need to get access to the relay. And with a 9mm nut driver, you want to take this off. We marked the thing so we could hook it back up correctly. Take that relay off. Are you just snipping those wires, Rich? I just tip, uh, snipped the uh, zip tie off. And we'll place this relay in a nice safe place because we'll be needing it later. You'll find zip ties all over the place that you have to discard. Then now you'll take your sign light connections off. Push that out of the way. And now you're ready to take your sign off. Put the sign in a nice safe place so it doesn't get ruined. And now we're ready to take the specialty box off. Ready? Yep. a little finagling because they have padding and sticky things. You'll have the airline in your way too. You'll just have to get that out of the way. What you want to do is grab this airline with channel locks, whatever you have. Make sure because once you pull that airline off, it'll shoot you air out. And you'll you might lose the uh, air connection. Cut it. I can't get to it. Save the parts, sometimes the uh, local bus place will reuse them to repair another bus. 
Now what you want to do, we're doing electric mile model on this particular bus, but this is where you would get your air if you were doing air. But for today's sake, we are just gonna cut that and cap it. Yeah. Go ahead. While he's working on the air unit, another person can start and take off this rib here, which is going to be in our way. What size bit? Uh, number three. Phillips head. to worry about it falling off because they use adhesive when they first put it on. In fact, using a hammer to help loosen it will make it a lot easier on you. Again, set it aside neatly because it will be reused. Now you're going to use the same bolts that you just took off. Uh, hold in thing to put it back on with. The holes are pre-drilled and lined up in the exact same manner. Tighten up the top one really secure. And then level up this bottom piece before you start to tighten up the rest. I'm going to eyeball this to make sure it's approximately level with the parallel to the bottom rib, which will make it right with the bus. Here's a number 12 1 inch self drilling screws. There's 13 of these, which is a little bit of an overkill, but that way nobody can worry, has to worry about it ever falling off a bus. At this point you can take off the temporary brace that just held it in shipping. Now I'm going to tighten up this lower bolt. And then we're going to insert a new one up there, where they never had one. Sometimes you'll find that they've double plated them, as in this case, in which case you'll have to drill it first and then put in the screw. For the drill, you just get through that extra heavy piece of metal. When using a self-drilling and a, and a uh, impact wrench, you can tell if the thing is holding solid because it'll go at the end. If it starts to just go around like this, then the thing is stripped and you'll have to put in a bigger size. And if, with practice, you'll realize how far you need to put it in. Sometimes there's insulation inside the bus at the panel and it'll back off a self-drilling screw in which case you have to stop and take it out and put in a regular screw. A regular screw that's not self-tapping. Mm -hmm. 
some of the positions require an extension on the so on the driver bit. that spot then you just back it out and you go to the next size larger which is a number 14 And you heard it ratchet at the end you know it's tight. At that point you test this make sure it's reasonably smooth. Sometimes it'll be a little tight because of everything that's done but wiggle it a little bit and it, all of a sudden you'll find that it's pretty easy to turn. There's the bearing seat. The sign goes back on same as you took it off. Same bolt holes. This frame is designed to fit the sign bolt holes exactly. You're replacing the same nuts that were you took off. Then we're ready to put on the first part of the steel frame. Notice you want one tab on one side of the side and the other on the other side of the side. Point at the tabs. This is held on with three, three eighths nylon, nylon insert nuts. Again, the whole thing is done with a lot of overkill. Uh, three eighths is way more than adequate to hold it on, but we chose that to make sure that there's no probable reason that it would ever come off. We even had one in Maine where a snowplow came along and took clipped off the arm and the electric arm, and the uh, metal steel, the black steel frame, still held on the bus. One of the things I like to do when I first get it installed like this is shake it and you can see that the bus will move but this thing isn't coming off and you know you've done a good job. So now we're ready for our box. We'll place the box in between the rub rails like this and make sure it is lined up. With what? To the you want an even space out through this top rub rail. Now you don't want to do it to break. You gotta be careful to break these ears here. So once you get your screw in, sometimes you might have to drill it out. Take, you'll see your ground wire in here in this box and you'll want to attach that. Excellent. So 
now we we are going inside the bus to do some work in there. Now this only pertains to C2s, the Thomases. We have to take this panel out. This one just usually lifts right in. And I'm unscrewing the panel here to get to the fuse block. I think there's six screws in some. Yes, there's six screws. Careful, just slip this out just a little bit so you can get to your fuse block. Where's the fuse block? Alright, so you have an accessory fuse block over here. And you will have to take this part off here to expose this area, which you'll want to. You want to mark your hole. I use a sharpie, and you look through the rear view mirror, and you'll look for this black where you took the rib off. And you want to line your mark up to where you'll hit this open area here. And now Bob will. Drill a 5 16 hole. And while he's drilling, you just want to make sure nothing in that area. And you can see the hole start right there. Robin, what you did. Okay, now that we got our wire through, we have plenty of wire to get to our accessory block here. This will require our 15 amp fuse and a female connector. Now that we got our wire in here, now this is accessory block. That means this doesn't have, it has no power until you turn the key on. And if these were full, you could put a fuse link into this part and run your wire. We don't recommend having full power all the time. We always want to put it on the accessory. And now we're ready to close this up. And you are done with your electrical part inside the bus. Okay, now, because this is an electric model, you still have air going to your solenoid here. So what you want to do, even though I capped it off in the front there, I am going to cut this line here going to the solenoid and I will cap it again. How do you know which solenoid to use? Usually, for the stop sign is usually the back one, and the front so uh, solenoid is for your cross arm. Now in case you have two signs on the bus in the back, this one will be the middle.
So what you want to do, you want to cut it, making sure you move all wires away. And now we are we are capped. So that drained the uh, drained the, all the air from the bus at that point. Yes. And then you just button that back up, right? And button this back up, and then you are done inside of a Thomas C2. So I drilled the starter hole through to make sure that everything's in line. Now we increase it to a 5 16. Included in your package is a piece of Rainbird tubing. It's just a quarter inch tubing. You could use air hose. Slide it into there. It comes back over to here. We're going to run our wires through that. Measure off approximately how much wire you're going to need. You're going to need some on the inside. Just figure to about there. And some on the outside, going back over to your clips here. Cut it off. That's about what, six feet? Could be six feet in length, depending on the size of the bus. Each bus is a little different, even if it's the same manufacturer. You just fed that through the Rainbird? You got it? Yep. Well. Whoa, you can't have time. Additionally, we're going to use a piece of uh, cable channel here to ensure that everything stays within the rub rail. This is self-adhesive. At this point, you're going to retrieve your rub rail. This front piece usually is a little loose. It leaves you a little bit of forgiveness. I like to put up the center one first to make sure everything is adjusted correctly before you tighten everything up. At the other end here you have that piece of uh, black plastic tubing and mine is not hanging out where it belongs so I've got to remove this and adjust it again.
Okay, now you're going to check again that your front's going to be okay. And at the back, what you want to see is this coming out in between where these two meet so that the wire isn't uh, compressed at all. And it goes up into this area where we have all our wires. We're going to connect into a loom and back into this aluminum box. Now I'm just going to install a number of screws here. Sometimes when you're mounting this, this light, this uh, mid-bus light, is in the way or something and you have to move it, remove the two screws, pull this out, you'll find there's plenty of wire. You can either go down here or up here or uh, even as low as here. There's no height requirement on it other than it's above three feet. So you have a plenty of playroom to put in here. There's probably an extra foot, foot and a half of wire inside here. This time we did not have to move it. It's not in the way of anything. Uh, what size hole do you need to drill? It's a 9 16 in the back here that's drilled to, to take your plug. There you go. We have a plug that we provide like this. It'll go exactly in that hole. Now I'm going to attach the actuator. And we're just going to do that loosely while it finishes up the rest of the electrical wiring. We're just going to set the bolt in there and just put it on with your fingers at the bottom here. This is a 7 16 bolt. One of the interesting and uh, good features of the engineering early on is that this piece is stainless steel so it uh, won't corrode with uh, use and so is this piece over here as is the main shaft which goes through the brass bushings. How thick is that so shaft? The, the uh, main shaft is half inch stainless steel. All the fasteners used on this product are stainless steel. Anything that is steel or aluminum is powder coated. And this uh, is a PVC box weather type. While you're inside the bus, we just connected this to the loom area coming out here. And okay, so with this plate, this plate's provided. It'll have a 7 8 inch hole drilled through it. And because the hole is off center, you'll be able to turn it in any direction you need to to cover this larger hole that you have. This is the size hole you have for a... That's a noise from another bus going by. This is the size hole you'll have for a Thomas, but on a Bluebird or a um, International, you'll have a different size hole and sometimes two smaller holes. So what we're going to do, before you put this plate on, you're going to silicone around this hole so it's nice and watertight. It doesn't quite that take that much, but my first is a bit as a glob. And then we will fasten this up. one screw into it. The next step on the thing is to fish through this blue wire that you put under the rib. Put it in the same loom as you have. That's the hot wire. Okay. This power will wire. be the power wire going out to the new system. I just shove it in almost anywhere just to get it through there and they originally had this taped at the bottom I could have 
cut it off and I might have to in this case because it doesn't want to feed through. <coughs> Using a utility knife, just cut through the tape that they had here so you can get at the room a little easier. So we'll tape it together up at the top here and around where that other wire comes out. And then we'll use a zip tie to actually hold it. We'll put a grommet around here in a minute and then he'll be fishing the rest of this loom in through here. We're just fishing this through a piece of channel. What are you fishing? The light wire going out to the sign. And you pull it back through most of the way. How much space do you leave? There you go. Just leave it at the end there, approximate. Now the wiring guy will take over. Alright, so we got our wiring loomed. Bring this some of this back in here. This is your ignition wire that we hooked up inside the bus. So. Mm -hmm. Strip it. And we'll strip it like so. And we'll follow, you got your ground. And this, is, this will be your ignition wire. It's red wire on this side, but we have a little blue indicator. Indicate blue, snap it in like that, and you're good. We we'll want to bring our light wires in. Throw our grommet here. Bring these through here. Stick our loom in here. We're gonna take our relay, 
Yeah, hook up the wires. I want to hook up the wires first because we marked them. So it'll make it easier. What you use to mark it? Use a, a, a silver sharpie. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to take our splitter that comes with the kit, and you're going to want to put it on your blue wire, because that's your switch wire. And then you'll hook up that end here. Hold that up for us, the whole thing. There you go. And now you want to take your sign wires and the red go to the two tabs and the red goes to the two tabs as we know and just double check everything make sure everything's nice and Connect it. And we'll want to place this relay. So your, your splitter wire could easily fit there. From this side, it's kind of Use. I use the number 12 inch screw and then we'll just take our splitter wire and you'll fall right below that. the and this will be your splitter wire that goes inside the box and that's right below the power switch. right it's a switch, a switch, wire. switch wire and those are all pre-wired and those are all pre-wired and now we'll zip tie all this up. So we're going to determine how much length we need. this you don't cut them until you get them and we don't the cut them this, and then you'll find out how much you need and this is your actuator line so we need that much
from the cut off the small wire. Now you'll only need the yellow and the green wire. These other little wires, you don't need to. Those can be cut off. So now we'll take our, open up our tabs here. And you'll see little tape on the wires here. So we know green goes to black on the other side. Push it all the way in, clip it down, make sure it's secure. And this white one, you see the little yellow tape. We you know that will be the yellow wire. Slip it all the way in and push your tab down. Make sure it's tight. Got your ground, you got all your connectors in. And the electrical is done. Okay, now we're on to our sign portion. Pick up our sign. We'll line up the two pinholes here. We'll push it in. Install the top one first. Install the top one first. They should line up. Make sure that the back towards you is flush. And they should just slip right in. We'll connect the watertight fitting. And then we'll put our nut on. And it just has to be snugged. What do we do if uh, if they're slightly not lining up? All right. So what you do is if these aren't lining up, you take a pair of pliers. Make sure that these are in there good. And to be flush on the front. You gotta go over to the front. Be the front towards me. It's gonna be flush there. Yeah. It's blank. See this part is flush. Well, this part's not because the sign is on a little bit of an angle. In. So when it comes going to a three quarter turn. Yes, you got a half inch frame going into a three quarter turn. And if you look at it, the sign is just in just ever so slightly. So now we'll take our bumper here, we'll line it up to where we want it. Where is the, where do you want it? We want it like in the middle, just like that. is correct. Now, you want to take the sign, pull it out a little bit, and just make sure that the sign doesn't hit the bus. Why? So it doesn't bang? So it doesn't bang on the bus. Now that won't bang. Go ahead. Now we're ready for the actuator. We'll take the actuator. We'll line it up to the hole, take our clevis pin. What if it doesn't line up correctly? Now, these are adjustable, but you want to, but this one's going to be perfect. What you want to do is take your hand, push the sign in a little bit, put your clevis pin in, and make sure that the sign is tight to the bus. Take our clevis pin and put our clevis pin in.
Okay. Then I'm going to take uh, two 5 8 inch wrenches and tighten up the back. Is that a nylon thread? If you got an international, you're going to want to do the, uh, or you, have you got... Sometimes they get to a point and you can't tighten them anymore even though the bolt isn't snug and that's normal on these nylon inserts. They just get to be really hard. Hi guys, after a good job done and you've got the full solution installed now, we're going to test it and see what it actually works or not. So let's watch this happen. Door is open. Arms out. Closes. Congratulations, guys. Bravo. Good job. Thank you very much.